我们很高兴为大家请到了 Agastya Go， 他是国际信息奥赛和国际物理奥赛的双料冠军。Yes, Agastya. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Any questions? Would you share what coding classes you took before you started coding competition? What math knowledge you have when you start coding in your sixth grade? Did you finish intermediate algebra? Uh, so I also did not do much in terms of formal classes.、Uh, I was very lucky in that、uh, my dad knows a lot of coding and a lot of math, so he has taught me a lot of what I know. In fact, like all the way up to platinum. In fact, he was able to help me through. Uh, data structures, and I would definitely recommend、uh, looking online as well because this approach meant that I only had one source, and so I I pulled up to camp knowing what a segment tree is, but not knowing what a Fenwick tree is. So I would very much recommend that you do、uh, use online resources as well. But I think that classes are helpful, but not necessary. I think that it is possible to get anywhere you want to go with just what is online. In terms of math knowledge, I had started doing some math competitions before, but I was I've always been. Uh, ahead in comp in coding competitions compared to math competitions. By the time I first qualified for the AIM in seventh grade, I was already gold, and so、uh, I think that math competition knowledge was not a big part of my journey. I think that at some point you will you there will be、uh, requisite math knowledge.、Uh, a lot of problems do require some mathematics, but I think that you shouldn't worry too much about trying to learn math as a prerequisite to coding because, as Rohan said, it's very possible to learn math through coding as opposed to the other way. And finally, did I finish intermediate algebra in sixth grade? Uh, I took algebra one as a sixth grader, so I guess not.、Uh, could you briefly explain the pointing points scoring system for USECO?、Uh, yeah, so the USECO system、uh, works as follows: there are usually there are three problems.、Uh, in theory, they they on their website they say that there are three to four problems, but I've never seen a contest that is not three problems. These three problems are not arranged in increasing order difficulty; they are alphabetized, and each problem is worth an equal number of points. Um, however, unlike other competitions, the USACO uses a test case system. So each problem is worth an equal number of points, and each test case of that problem is worth an equal number of points within that problem. So if a problem is usually worth three hundred thirty-three points, and there are ten test case cases, then each test case is worth around thirty-three points.、Uh, and then there are also subtasks, which are just some test cases that have easier constraints.、Uh, next question: Online resources you can share. I think、uh, they just shared basically USACO dot guide, USACO dot org. Code forces. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, these forces generally fall into two categories. The first is for learning new like tricks and algorithms, and the other is for problems. For problems, I think that、uh, for pretty much every contestant alive, if you just use Usaco and Code Forces, you'll be fine.、Uh, but if you are looking for other problems, you can use Add Coder, you can use Top Coder, Code Chef. There are really many, many sources. But I think that for now,、uh, I'm not exactly sure、uh, where you are in your trajectory. But I think that starting with Usaco and Code Forces is a solid way to start. And then for learning new tricks, as we said, Usaco dot guide is a fantastic resource. And if you're、uh, if you're like looking for a specific tutorial on a specific trick, then just googling that will give you a nice Geek to Geek article or a Code Forces blog that will probably be good.、Uh, next one, if I'm already familiar with Python, when should I start learn、uh, C plus plus? How far can Python get me? What do you think? Yeah, so、uh, I have the belief that with Python,、uh, you can get all the way to the Usaco camp. And the only reason you cannot go farther and get an IOI gold medal is because you are not allowed to use Python at USACO camp.、Uh, actually, I don't know if this is true. You can go as far as you are allowed to use in Python. However, that being said, I think that C plus plus is a far more friendly language to use. So I started competitive programming with Python, and I was able to,、uh, in the open contest、uh, in my sixth grade year, I was silver, and I was able to make gold with Python. But that contest irked me a lot because the solution to the last problem used a balanced binary search tree. Which is an extremely advanced、uh, concept, which is still pretty rare even at the camp level. But the reason it was used is because in C plus plus there is this、uh, there's a structure called a set, which is very easy to use and very beginner friendly. So C plus plus is just nice for a lot of reasons. It has a standard template library, which is pre implemented algorithms, and it also has it's also way faster than Python, which is another main reason. So I think that if you、uh, really want to, you can stick with Python. But I think that you should start learning C plus plus as soon as you feel comfortable with Python syntax,、uh, and as soon as you Uh, feel comfortable with like thinking about competitive programming problems because it'll make you way faster, even though it's a little bit clunkier. Thank you.、Uh, how did you find the time to do all the things you do? What other easy activities do you do besides coding?、Uh, yeah. So、um, I think, like I said in my presentation,、uh, coding for me is no longer something I have to worry about having time for.、Uh, for me, it's something I just do whenever I feel like it, whenever I'm bored,、uh, whenever I would be watching a movie. I'm instead coding. Uh, so for me, my time just comes out of my leisure time because I think of competitive programming as leisure.、Um, and some other things I do are、uh, I go to school and I 
Uh, nowadays, I spend less time doing homework than I used to, but I used to spend a lot of time doing homework. I take some math classes outside of school. Uh, right now, I'm playing tennis. I, I sing as well. Uh, and uh, this year, I started doing competitive physics as well. So I think that uh, you can do uh, many things. And I think the key about time is that the like you only need to have time to do the things you don't want to do. Because uh, I think that the things you want to do take way less time than the things you don't want to do. As an example, when I'm doing reading my APUSH textbook, it's way, way harder than doing competitive programming. And so it takes way longer than it should, even if I'm only actually spending an hour on a chapter. It takes two and a half hours somehow. So I think that the reason I'm able to do a lot of things is because I enjoy most of the things I do. Uh, I see. Actually, some parents ask, do you, do you guys play games at all or not? Oh, I don't play games. Uh, what I do is I watch YouTube. Uh, I, I've been trying to watch less YouTube as I feel like it is not something I actually enjoy. And every time I watch YouTube, I think, oh, I would have enjoyed coding or whatever more. Uh, but I don't spend that much time on it. And I think that the reason is just because there's so many things that I enjoy more that I don't really do it. Uh, I do play a lot of games with my friends, but the games I play are generally not video games because my friends and I don't really play video games. We play a lot of board games instead. Let's move on. What do you guys, how do you guys get better at math? Well, I'm probably not the person to ask for this because in addition to uh, my doing competitive programming, I also did math competition very seriously. So the way I got better at math is the same way I got better at competitive programming. It wasn't a chore for me. I just like attended math competitions. I did math. I, like my, my dad taught me some math. I did math by myself. And so I just treated it like any other competition. It was very fun for me. And so uh, I just learned it. I think that a lot of people just kind of learn math through competitive programming, where you see a, a, a lot. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Next one. How about Java? Will it work for Platinum? Yeah, uh, Java is a great language too. Java is very similar to C++ in terms of syntax. Uh, I, in my opinion, it's a little bit less good because you don't have pointers and it's a little bit slower and there's this weird garbage collector thing. Uh, but Java works. I don't actually know the current status of Java for USACO. I know people have been very successful with it in the past. Uh, notably, Danny Mithel was able to use it to get all the way to the IOI and do well there. But I recall hearing something recently about it not being allowed anymore. I know at camp, some problems are C++ only. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about the current status of Java. For Platinum, it will definitely work, though. See, next one, you started to learn coding at a young age, fourth grade. I was wondering, how do you keep yourself being interested, passionate, and excited about coding? Have you ever thought about giving up because you have learned, learned it for such a long time? Well, I think that coding is like an important skill that almost everyone will learn at some point for some use or another. And when I started learning coding, it was just for that reason, just, oh, coding, like, it's something that's useful, you'll, you'll use it. Uh, I started coding in a completely, like, competitive programming free environment. I was uh, just coding. I started by making a tic-tac-toe game with an HTML website. Uh, but then when I started doing competitive programming, I was able to keep myself interested because the problems are just interesting and fun. And so I just find it fun. And I keep myself passionate just because it's just fun. I have never had to feel like I'm burning out just be because it's, I think of it as a hobby that's fun for me. Um, and I have thought of giving up coding once. Uh, I thought of giving up coding in ninth grade. Uh, this is after the u -Seco season. I had done somewhat poorly that season. I thought until the last contest uh, in the Platinum Division. And so I was seriously considering giving up because I felt like I was at a roadblock in competitive programming and that getting to the camp was really hard. I didn't know if I would was willing to spend another year doing it. Um, I think since then I have enjoyed it more and more, like my enjoyment of it has grown. So I think once you're able to really, really enjoy it as a hobby, you won't necessarily think to give it up just because you enjoy it so much. Uh, I see a question sent to me uh, using direct message, probably from our parents. Uh, does it have to be smart to do musical? Uh, do you guys have high IQs? Well, I guess first about IQ, what I noticed about IQ is it, it just seems to be like a math competition problem. So, uh, like, I have never finished an IQ test. And I, I took a, a few, like, halfway, around, like, a year apart. And I noticed that each year it kept getting easier and easier. And this is because I was doing more and more competition math. And so I think that IQ for, is just, like, uh, basically a measure of how much how much experience you have recognizing patterns. And has very little to do with, like, some sort of intelligence. Um, I, I think that there are very, very wildly different opinions on this. Uh, if you... Um, if you don't value your sanity, you can go to Code Forces and look at the rants and debates about whether there's something innate needed for competitive programming. I personally think you can get, a, like, I don't know if you can be the best in the world. I don't know, if, but I think that everyone can get essentially arbitrarily high and do, like, top, be top 10 in the world uh, with, if, you're, if it's something you really enjoy and are really willing to spend the effort for. So I don't think it's a huge factor, but I don't know if I can say that it doesn't exist. I see another question. Uh, my son struggles to go from silver to gold. Do you have any suggestions? 
Uh, yeah, so I also struggled from going to silver to gold. And as Rohan previously mentioned, uh, I think the main reason is uh, because bronze is traditionally, I don't know if this is true anymore, has traditionally been about just testing your understanding of syntax and some basic algorithms, whereas silver is now about uh, starting to understand like, competitive programming, not competitive programming tricks, but just being able to make observations, which is what we call it. The, the, a new skill where you have to be able to reduce a problem down to something simpler or to understand something key about the structure of the problem. So I think that silver to gold is a huge jump and you shouldn't feel disheartened if it's hard. Um, I think the main thing you should do is just continue to practice problems that are above your level. So you're getting exposure to this new idea of having to deconstruct problems into multiple layers uh, and not just being able to directly implement what the problem is telling you to do. Thank you very much. I think we answered pretty much all the questions. So what's your guys plan for the future to talk about it? So you both are uh, end of your junior year, right? So yeah, what's the plan? Yeah, um, I mean, my future plans are I think very packed right now. I, this is the time to you know be preparing for USAC camp and to be wrapping up school for this year. And then I have a very packed summer and then I come back and immediately write my college applications. Uh, and then second semester senior year, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, I'll maybe continue coding and maybe I'll try out some other competitions and just do whatever is interesting for me. I will be bathing in the senioritis and I won't, I won't really know what to do, I guess. Okay, if not, I'm going to end it here. Thank you, guys. Uh, you guys are doing great. I'm so impressed by your achievement. And uh, yeah, I think you are, those are remarkable young men. And I uh, wish you every success in your future uh, endeavors.